Hey there everyone, Haz here, and I thought I'd like to do a follow-up guide for the Familiars video I've done a few days ago, and make one for equipment as well. Overall, I think I explained most of the things you should know in the Familiars guide, and I don't have to go into all the details here, they're quite similar, so in this one I will specifically try to go through what's exclusive to equipment in Nino Kuni. Regardless, I really don't mean it as a clickbait, but since I won't go through all the details, just copying half of what I said there, to see the full picture of upgrading both equipment and familiars, I recommend watching them together when you have the time. The game comes out on the 25th of May, and starting tomorrow I'll begin my 7 days long Prepare for Launch YouTube series explaining everything you should know for launch, from free to play class tier list, tips, mistakes, or what to do day 1. Stay tuned. Now, equipment is one of the other dominant factors when it comes to determining your accounts and your character's power. They're acquired through either gotcha summoning or crafting. Summoning is done using free in-game tickets the game will reward you with quite often, or premium currency called diamonds. There's 60% chance to get a 2-star, 36% chance for a 3-star, and 4% chance to get a 4-star equipment, with half percent aggregated chance inside to get a super rare 4-star, if I'm not making any big math mistake here. Unfortunately, equipment gotcha is combined, meaning armor and weapons are in the same category, so there's a lot of items in the pool, and going for duplicates is going to be hard, even though there's only one super rare version of each elemental weapon, and there's two pieces of armor for each slot. While the rates are pretty low, one positive side they can think of, based on the 11 months that the Asian client has been out, is that the rare items you can get on day 1 are still exactly as good a year later, and I believe there was no gotcha power creep, as they call it, that lowers the value of anything you win. Meaning, there were no new weapons added within a year, so you don't have to worry about timing your summons or saving up for something potentially better a month later and fear of missing out on things, and the value of your gotcha stays stable. Worry not, there's also a free-to-play in-game method, which is crafting. Crafting on the other hand allows you to choose what you'd like to craft specifically, dividing weapons, armor, and accessories, so there's a more targeted approach to it that helps. Crafting them costs a combination of tickets and materials, the former rewarded from quests and daily rewards, while the latter mostly farmed from killing monsters. This way you will be able to craft a healthy amount of equipment even though it's randomized, and this will be the main source of weapons and armor for free to play or low spending players. While the chances are significantly lower, you actually do have a chance to acquire any item from the gacha pool, so nothing is barred exclusively behind money. I've heard legends that once in a blue moon you might get a super rare 4 star item from this. but. Fortunately for us, they included a pity system for crafting too, and after crafting down 200 items, you'll be guaranteed a 4-star equipment in each category separately, which has massive significance, as this gives hope for free-to-play players to maximize their 4-star equipment, making them a realistic goal compared to shiny 4-stars. So what should we know about equipment? Crossworlds uses a generic elemental system that's easy to understand, and all you need to know about it is that if you use the right element, your weapon deals plus 50% damage, and if you use the not neutral but opposing element, you deal minus 50% damage. This alone will make it so that you always want to use the right elemental weapon, and just using one weapon, even if it is very powerful, isn't a very good idea in my opinion. Both armors and weapons will have stats on them, and the good news is that they are fixed. No random nonsense on top of the gacha you have to worry about at launch. On top of stats, all of the equipment will also have passive abilities you unlock upon awakening them, or using duplicates in simple terms. On the same milestones that you unlock their collectible rewards in your codex, 
so Awakened 3 and 7, you unlock additional passive abilities with a maximum of 3. These are also predetermined and are always the same. They will be important as some of them can increase your damage against other players or monsters, or they can reduce damage taken instead. And you gain all these passive effects as long as they are equipped, meaning if you use one weapon with the right element, you still get the passive benefits of the other two weapons you have equipped. So, how do we upgrade equipment? You have leveling, boosting, strengthening, and awakening as base upgrade methods. Let's start leveling. The three categories, so weapon, armor, and accessories will also be divided into three types of upgrade materials. You can level up all equipment from level 1 to 30 using leveling materials exclusive to the equipment type or other similar items. Similarly like at Familiars, you do get a bonus for upgrading weapons with the same elemental materials. Once they are level 30, they become eligible for boosting, which is the process of raising the star rarity by 1 and resetting their level back to the start allowing you to further level the weapon to a maximum of 6 stars. Needless to say that while everything can reach 6 star level 30, items that start with a higher rarity do have better base stats and abilities on them. Strengthening is a more simple process than familiars, thankfully. You can spend these special elemental pins on equipment to strengthen them to a maximum of plus 30 to increase their base stats. For accessories and armor, it's just a single material, but for weapons there's a different type for each element and you'll have rainbow pins that can be used universally on all weapons. Unlike leveling, while this process starts at 100% chance, the more you try to strengthen a single equipment, the less of a chance you'll have to succeed. So eventually, really high level equipment will be pretty difficult to strengthen further, making it one of your long-term goals. The good thing is that strengthening can be transferred between the same type of items. If you found a better item you'd like to transfer all your strengthening, you can do so, but it will destroy the original item in the process. Still, it's definitely worth keeping in mind. And finally, we have Awakening, which is the duplicate mechanic in Nino Kuni Crossworlds. Upon obtaining copies of the same items, you'll be able to merge them to upgrade a single version of the equipment. Similarly like strengthening, this process starts at 100%, but as you increase the awakening level of the item, all the way up to a maximum of plus 10, this chance will massively drop, requiring you to use multiple copies of the same item at once to increase your chances of awakening them. As mentioned earlier, awakening is an important upgrading process, as you unlock a new ability for all items and familiars at awakening 3 and awakening 7 while also upgrading their ability skill scaling. Awakening will be one of the prime features that will determine what items you will want to concentrate on, concentrate on upgrading, and using as your main equipment to be able to reach their maximum efficiency. As a final segment, I'll briefly mention the codex in this video as well. Nino Kuni Crossworlds has a massive in-game codex that rewards you for technically anything you acquire, including upgrades on items. These rewards can be tiny bit of power from 50 to 100, but when combined, they'll form a large chunk of your account power, especially useful when leveling your alts. For this reason, one of your goals will be to max out your collections, meaning I highly recommend against using any equipment as a fodder, leveling material, or destroying any of them. You will want to first evolve them all up to plus 10 and also level them all up to 6 star eventually to unlock their maximum codex entry, so that you'll never have to bother with them ever again. Do not underestimate this, it will be crucial, especially if you are a free to play player. But that is it for this follow up equipment guide everyone, I hope it didn't feel rushed or less detailed and everything is clear that I tried to tell here. I still recommend watching the familiar and this equipment guide together to get a full picture of everything I said and have a clear understanding of how upgrading will work in Nino Kuni. Thank you very much for the support, it actually keeps getting better every day which is insane. Tomorrow I'll start my 7 days preparation series so get hyped! Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.